Olympo started it. Iwata refined it. GSI Krios brought it to the masses. But evolution doesn't end just because the factories moved on. No single brand could deliver the brush I envisioned. So I took what they left behind. Crossed cultures, borrowed brilliance, and bent tradition until something new took shape. I blended legacy components, fused them with German precision from Harder and Steenbeck, and added a clever twist borrowed from Badger to craft something no brush had ever been. It's not a clone, it's a chimera. A convergence of five brands, not stitched together, but harmonized. Attuned not just to me, but to the very idea of progress. The heart of this build was an Olympos HP 100SB, a design nearly 40 years old. And this actual body might be as old as I am. This would be my first side loader. Beautiful, but outdated. The trigger feedback felt dazed and confused like it didn't know how to speak my language or vibe with me. I traced the issue to the guide assembly. Needle guide, spring, lever guide, tensioner. This unwieldy design with a loose lever guide needed to come out. Once I took that mess out, I found one last barrier, an inner guide ring. That ring had me stumped. Even after reaching out to the Olympos curator, no clear answer, but I had a hunch. I grabbed the reverse thread tap, and just like that, it spun free. The old bloodline cracked open. Time to mature it. Having experienced the bliss of an Iwata Custom Micron guide assembly, I knew that was the ideal system for this brush. Precision, smoother response. A control curve that looks more like a straight line than a winding goat path, and surprisingly cheap for the parts that carry the name. Then came the harder and seen back chucky nut. With a self-centering tail, it was going to sing with the mod I had in mind. I swapped out the old air valve with a new GSI Krios version. Tighter, smoother, better. And for the end piece, I went with GSI again. Picked for price, but it matched the harder and seen back nut so well, it looked bespoke. Sometimes you don't choose aesthetics. They choose you. Every choice was made for function, but as it all came together, something else started to take shape. Unplanned and undeniable. Form in the service of feeling. Was it design, happenstance, or the next step in an old unfolding? Whatever it was, I'm here for it. Before I touched a file or cut a thread, I had to know how this thing performed. Just the new internals, but with the original Olympos needle and nozzle. It was the control group in this little arcane experiment. I wanted a baseline. New bones, old heart. And right away, thin lines were tough to pull. The taper felt unstable. And after just a few passes, quite a bit of tip dry. I'm not a jet engineer, but I've spent enough time with these things to notice patterns. The Olympos needle has a longer stick out and a sharp, acute grind. The new Iwata needles, they have a more obtuse angle and less exposure. That means less surface area for paint to dry on, and when it does dry, you still retain a better shape. Cleaner break, less turbulence. All the major brands are moving that way, and now I know why. Turns out, evolution wasn't just happening in the parts that I had swapped, it was also the parts that I hadn't. This thing was good, but it hadn't found its voice. Yet. They say a tool becomes yours when you leave your mark upon it, but for a wizard, a maker, ownership begins at the moment of transformation. The brush was assembled, the bloodlines braided together, but it still felt alien, unattuned. I hadn't quite earned it yet, so I began the ritual of alteration. The GSI end piece was a great start, but I'd have no way to access the needle without a full teardown. That wouldn't do. 
I needed the freedom to pull and clean without breaking the spell. So I carved the back open, splitting it into twin prongs. A nod to the Badger Patriots design, but sharper, sleeker, mine. Next, the crown. Too bulky, too blind. It obscured the dance between tip and canvas. So I filed it down to two slender forks, echoing the form of a Harder and Steenbeck fine line crown cap. Now the brush could see its own precision and I, and I could clear tip dry. But as the crown met the body, another challenge surfaced. The alignment was off. The threading stopped shy of perfection. In swordsmithing, when a pommel won't seat clean, you don't force it. You refine it. You sand the mating face until metal turns home. Aligned not by pressure, but by harmony. And so I did. A smith's trick used in a precise manner. My hands have shaped blades before, and they remember. The mods were complete. The form was changed. But symmetry, true, elegant symmetry, isn't luck. That would take something else. A deeper solution. And that, I'll get back to that. The first spray test revealed the problem. The brush built beautifully, but sprayed like it had secrets. Lines wandered, feedback faltered. The build worked, but the brush didn't flow. Something upstream was wrong. Then I remembered a note from my research. A tinkerer who worked on a similar build. Different path, same wisdom. The needle and nozzle make the soul. Iwata enhanced their products with an updated design. Wider angle, less protrusion. Less drying, more control, more confidence. When paint dries at the needle tip, it alters the jet. That means sputters, inconsistency, frustration. But this shape, shorter, stouter, cleaner, holds its line, holds its nerve. I dropped in the new needle and nozzle, tightened the seal, set the trigger. And for the first time, the Camara breathed. Straight fire. So here's the part where, where I tell you everything went wrong. And it didn't. No strip threads, no mystery rattle, no springs yeeted into the abyss. Not even a sigh of frustration. Everything just clicked. Each part sealed like it belonged there. Threaded like it had been waiting. And honestly, kind of felt like cheating. But that's the wizard's secret, right? Preparation is magic. And when the prep is perfect, even reality bows its head. I didn't force this build into place. I conducted it. And when it was done, no notes. You can spend a lifetime searching for the perfect tool. But sometimes, it only becomes perfect after you shape it. The new needle and nozzle brought the spray in line. The build was singing. But the attunement? That didn't come until I pulled the needle. No teardown, no resistance. Just a clean draw, like unsheathing something sacred. That feeling? It wasn't just performance. It was synthesis. German precision, Japanese lineage, American mods. Parts shaped by different cultures, different minds. Each forged with their own ideas of excellence. And maybe, just maybe, what emerged wasn't only mine. Maybe my instincts were influenced by an inner guide and master's past, who spoke to me in steel and brass. At that moment, I had an epiphany. While the brush transformed, maybe I did as well. I'm not just a painter, not just a builder, not even just a wizard. I'm a brushsmith now. My brush? Not a clone. Not a copy. Something else. Attuned.
This mod called for more than instinct. I needed symmetry, repeatability, confidence in the cut. So I made a jig. Simple in theory, essential in practice. And once I saw what it could do, how smooth the file rode, how clean the lines came out, I knew I had something worth sharing. I didn't build it for that reason, but once the process revealed itself, it felt wrong to keep it sealed away. So I'm thinking about throwing it up on the shop, which I still need to make, if there's some interest. Perhaps a physical kit, or STLs in a walkthrough for the inner circle, because some tools deserve to outlive the bench they were born on. And if this jig helps someone else become a brush smith, it did its job. I didn't build this to chase perfection. I built it because I couldn't help it. Four companies provided the materials and a fifth, the inspiration. But in the spaces in between them, mismatched parts and unanswered questions, this creation found its soul. This wasn't a Frankenbrush, random and chaotic. It was the Chimera, forged through intention, curiosity, and adaptation. Proof that blending bloodlines doesn't dilute the craft. It evolves it. Maybe you evolve too. Brushsmith, wand maker, Wizard with a new spell. Attuned. I'm the Wily Wizard. I build tools and ideas that solve problems, challenge habits, and inspire your craft. Welcome to Attuned, a series exploring what works, why it works, and how you can make it yours. This was episode one, Chimera. Whether you know me as Enzo Graming, the Wily Wizard, or Night Owl Forge, you can always count on me to blend what others abandon into something worthy of wonder. Until next time, keep tinkering, keep evolving, and stay inspired.